Welcome back, everyone. This is a Vintage Cube video. I'm currently waiting for my 64-player Vintage Cube draft to start. Um, for those who don't know the format, it's basically eight pots of eight players. And whoever 3 O's all of those pots will be um, put into the basically the final table. So, yeah, this video ends whenever I lose. And if I 3 O, we get to draft again. So, uh, yeah, let's see. First, let's see who's in our pod. These are always super stacked with, uh, you know, top players. Um, we have Namor Squats. We have JPA. So, speaking of JPA, there's a sneak attack. That's kind of cool. Other than that, Burning Trees, I've noticed, has done well in a lot of these. And uh, I don't know the rest. But uh, maybe joke's on me. Hmm. Okay. Um, sneak attack is a pretty good card to get early. Very good build around. Um... Sometimes there's some crossover with cards like Channel, like Oath of Druids, of course, Through the Reach. Sometimes you want to go into like Black Red and do some reanimation stuff. So for me, this is between Sneak Attack and Lightning Bolt. And it's actually pretty darn close, in my opinion. Sneak Attack is, Sneak Attack is like fun and has bigger upside, where Lightning Bolt is just incredibly solid. Sneak attack or lightning bolt. Sneak or lightning bolt. Hmm. Ah, it's so close. Other than that, not much worth talking about because, like, figure of destiny shirt, sure, also a white card, but the flexibility of it being white and red is kind of countered by the fact that there's lightning bolt in this pack. Okay, I'll let let somebody else fight over the Eldrassis. Let's start on lightning bolt. Not my favorite first pick, but uh. It is what it is. Ooh, this pack is atrocious. Hmm. So, a couple of things to consider here. So, let's say I end up mono red aggro. That fire blast is going to be awesome. But, um, if I'm second picking a fire blast, I'm kind of forcing it compared to if it wheels, and then I kind of know it's a good pick. Um, I think for me, this pick is supposed to be... Look, I would lo love to wield the Fire Blast. I just think it's a bad second pick. But I can take either Pentat Prism, which is decent in, you know, most multicolor decks. Uh, we're trying to ramp into stuff or splash some stuff. Or, or I can take Pyrokinesis. The thing about Pyrokinesis in a pod draft is, if I'm red aggro, that's one less slot that, that, look, that, that isn't an aggro deck in the draft, right? Then I would need to play against green or white um, for it to be really strong. Um, but I think I'm going to take it here. I guess shout out to something like Expressive Iteration. Who knows? I'll stay on color here. Okay, this pack is uh, basically Palace Jailer, um, Archon of Cruelty, and then a bunch of other cards. Narset, probably slightly better than the rest. But I'm going to take Palace Jailer here, so... Now, if I'm getting into straight-up Boros, I will need to pick up a lot of lands for that to work. Um, but that card is just so much better than the rest that, uh, yeah, I kind of have to take it. Let's say I went for something like Sneak Attack earlier. I would be looking at something like Woodfall Primus or Archon. But uh, that's not for us. Let's take the Palace Jailer. Best card in the pack. Not much to say there. So for this pack... Uh, the best card in this pack is probably something like Lorian Revealed or Adeline. And since Adeline is up there and it's good with Palace Jailer, I'm just going to take it. Um, so now I have double white and I have on like double double white card and I have a red mana requirement. So there's definitely something to be said about who knows where this draft is going. But if I am, am going to play Boros, really need to prioritize fixing. Okay, this pick will uh, definitely define my draft, I feel like. Because Flame Slash is a slightly better card than Thalia. But Thalia is a card that... <coughs> Excuse me. Thalia is a card that will set me up for Mono White. Then the question becomes, is it realistic that I'm going to be Mono White? A double mana white card definitely tell me I'm supposed to be double white. Six pick Thalia is not a sign or anything. I would say six pick Flame Slash is a bigger sign, if anything. So maybe that's the logic I should use. Flame Slash is, Flame Slash is better. But the problem is right now that two of my top three cards are white. 
very tough pick. I'm gonna go with the flame slash here. If if someone wanna go for Thalia there, I don't blame them. That would be totally fine. So now once again we kind of have a, an interesting choice. We can take the Blazing Root Wallow. It's actually a decent mono red card, like even without J graveyard shenanigans. I, I like that card. Uh, it's a one drop, it attacks for three. Or we can take Elegant Parlor and try and play everything. That's that's what I think I should do here. So yeah, I didn't quite have the guts to go for mono white nor mono red this draft. But Elegant Parlor, the, the Surveil Lands are quite quite good, so might as well see if I can fit everything into the deck. And then we have this pack. Ugh, this is not looking good. I don't think I can play any of these cards. So I can I can play Dam as a sideboard sideboard card as a four mana wrath. Okay. Faithless looting is not a is not a card for me. Okay, this is a lot better. I, I immediately saw the probe, but I think I like mana type too much. Um I'll take mana type over probe here, snuff out the best card in the pack. Actually a very, very solid pack here. Um yeah, let's take mana type. So I'm probably looking to build a Boros deck could also be like somewhat, you know, let's say two thirds white, one third red, and I just go for the good red removal. I don't have to play a card like Pyrokinesis. I don't have to pick up, you know, double red cards. But I think there's there are some solid cards here. We'll, we'll basically see what we'll wheel out of this pack. Right now, I'm eight cards in. Um, so right now, we're going to see all the wheels, and that's going to tell us a lot about how to navigate the draft. Vintage Cube is a bit different than other formats. Uh, lots of more corner cases, but in general, once you see the wheels coming in, you can kind of pick your direction. And uh, because it's not always smooth sailing, right? What do we have here? Toxic Deluge, even wheeling. Okay, I think I should take the white one drop. The white one drop is decent. The white five drop, incredibly replaceable, and five drops are just, yeah, not really where you want to be. So right now, I'm going to put my Pyrokinesis in the sideboard and aim to play basically mostly white. Let me put it that way. Okay, so Eagles is a fixer. Soul Guide is a good sideboard card against some of the best decks in the format. So do I want to improve my own mana or do I want to hate on one or maximum two decks in the pot? It's actually, it's actually pretty close. I'm going to go for the Eagle here. Uh, nothing we can use here. We can take, I guess, Deep Cavern out of the pack. Yeah, this is not a very exciting start to the draft. Had I taken the Sneak Attack, things would be more, at least more exciting. But Slow and Steady has oftentimes won the race in Vintage Cube, so, uh, let's see if we can, we can make that happen here. I've set myself up with, I mean... The fixing I saw, I prioritized. And I have good cards like Flame Slash, Lightning Bolt, Palace Dealer, Adeline. So, I mean, I love Mana Tithe as well, but probably not on that list. Let's see. I would love to be mainly white from, from here on out and then just have the red removal spells. Or if I open something like, you know, Fable, Gut, Bombardier, those cards. Your scrap work. Mutt, which is not a very good card in my opinion. I don't like the flare either. Um, should I? I guess we speculate on blue here. It it has a pretty high upside. I've talked about that in one of my previous videos. Just picking up almost free of charge, picking up this colonnade, and then if I open ancestral recall or time walk, profit right. We have a wrath for our sideboard. I have pyrokinesis that I might bring in if I pick up some more red cards, I guess. I didn't pick up the Soul Guide Lantern. Okay, Blazing Root while on the wheel. Uh, I guess that makes sense. If nobody's in Graveyard Deck and nobody's in Mono Red, I guess that makes sense. Also, people could just mistake it for Soul to a Graveyard card. I think it's just serviceable as a red one drop. So all of a sudden I'm back to you know who knows who knows about this blazing root wall. Also worth noting, none of the white cult cards wield like Dahlia, um can't remember the name. Two white, one colorless exile a non land permanent with mana value four or less. Apparition, none of those wield. So we might be, have to be full on Boros here. I mean, Fetches, Plateau, Sacred Foundry, those are extremely high picks. 
I think that was going to be the case anyway. But with none of those white cards wheeling, I kind of have to prepare for, for that reality. It's not ideal, though. I think Boros, sure, you can have better card quality overall, but your mana is most likely going to be worse than a monocolored deck, so there's going to be some failure rate there. Okay, time for pack two. So far, definitely below average what's going on here, especially with the stuff that did not wheel. Okay, we opened a Soul Ring, so that could definitely help any deck. Um, funnily enough, it's not its best in Boros, but it is what it is. So what else would we, would we be looking at here if this pack did not have a Soul Ring? I would just take Chain Lightning and be very happy about that. But yeah, Soul Ring, one of the best cards in Cube, if not the best. So we take that. I can't really wheel anything realistically out of this pack. Charm, Charmor, 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 Charmor. Charmander. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I'm not super confident here, but you know, aggro can oftentimes get the job done. All you have to do is like stumble a little bit and then all of a sudden the aggro deck has uh, reduced your life total to zero. Yeah, Plateau, Sacred Foundry, Arid Mesa, Prismatic Vista. Aspiring Vantage. Those like, starting two color lands would be very nice for this deck. Okay, I guess we'll have to settle for a Lelia. Lelia is a, that's a good three drop. Though if I'm playing Boros, I'll have a million of those. So not anything crazy, but still super solid. Turn two play with Zol Ring, not nothing. Um, so here I'm just going to take Fiery Confluence. It's the, it's the best card out of this pack. I like Harsh Mentor a decent amount. It's a, it's a good two-drop. Can reduce some life totals you know, here and there. Um, unexpectedly Absent could wheel. Carnage Interpreter could wheel. But then again, it's kind of flexible with the casting cost, so probably not. Yeah, I like Fiery Confluence. I have a lot of double-colored. Early white, early red, double-colored this, double-colored that. It's... Uh, My success in this draft will be depending on my ability to get past Boros fixing. Uh, no Boros fixing. Quickly scanning the pack for that. Okay, so I have Rob of the Rich and Retrofitter Foundry. I should probably take the two drop, though. The two drop, um, the Retrofitter Foundry is, is decent, but it doesn't look like I'll have any like artifact synergies, and it's a bit mana-hungry for an aggressive deck, so we can just take this. Maybe Wheel the Flicker Wisp or the Touch. That's some of those cards where they're probably not going to be amazing, but they can round out the deck just fine. I also might play this Legion in Extruder because... Let's see, what can it do right now? I can sacrifice my Soul Ring. I guess that isn't amazing. Um, but if I get some, like, Raven, uh, some treasure cards, maybe. Let's see. But it's a decent card. So I'm thinking about non-land high picks for me right now. So it's basically like Path, Plow, Dismember, Council's Judgment. Hmm. The good red three drops I already talked about. The good one drops could be, like, Mother of Runes. So mainly it's just like solid stuff up the curve. Solid stuff up the curve. A little bit of removal. Some good efficient creatures. And then something to help the mana base. Huh, so which creature is better here? Yeah, this pack has a lot of good cards for somebody else. Samwise or Shieldbreaker? Neither are a very exciting, but maybe the Samwise is the better card for like longer games. Shieldbreaker is better against someone with the Academy, but if that was the case, I should just hate draft the Academy, I feel like. Okay, I'll try with Shield Shieldbreaker. Uh sorry, with the uh, Samwise and see what happens. Okay, I actually love Glimmer Lens. I think that's an that's that's one of the best two drops. It's just so easy to send two random creatures into the red zone. Um yeah, let's take that card. 
Here's Ocelot Pride with Detectives Phoenix. So let's see. I guess Prismatic Ending is an honorable mention. So. Hmm. Cast them from my graveyard. So it's like recurring. Oh, she'll try and take the one drop here. That seems like a cool card if you can get that going. Okay. I like I like Legionnaire. Um that's always just a solid, a solid creature. Stern Scolding, Bitter Triumph. Yes, yeah, so there are definitely some good cards here. I'm not I'm not convinced at all I'm in the right seat. I think there's another Boros deck at the table. Actually, straight up Boros. Who's been taking, you know, half of my stuff. And I've done the same um for them. So yeah, I'm a bit worried. Let's see, I'm 23 cards in, so we have now seen everything. We're going to see seven cards we already saw. Yeah, we wield the Charmaw. There's also White Orchid Phantom, but I think that's going to be a little bit rough for the mana. Um, yeah, let's take this. I actually think, think Charmaw is decent. It should be like a three drop against some decks, at least. Even though it's a non-color talisman, I don't, I don't like that card. Maybe we can put it in the sideboard. Um, so let's see. Before I speculated on blue, is it better to speculate on black or green? I think it's better to speculate on green. Not 100% sure, though. I did wheel Interpreter. Is that good? Had I thought about the Lingering Souls, maybe I would have taken Scrubland. Let's take the Interpreter. I don't think it's amazing in this deck. Uh, Sheldog even wheeling. <laughs> I feel like I should take um, sideboard card over touch, but could be wrong. Let's see. These cards are not going to matter. They would have gotten taken if it, they were irrelevant. Okay, I'm taking some land stuff. Yeah, this needs a lot of help, like mana crypt, mox, and the stuff I've al already asked about. This is not good. I don't know where, where this uh, kind of went wrong, but... I think maybe my first few packs had too many, you know, solid white cards that other people picked up. Okay, here's Parallax Wave. Yeah, wow. Parallax Wave, Flage, Caracas. I think Parallax Wave is the better card. Parallax Wave is just, it doesn't really matter what you did up until that point. If you just play Parallax Wave, that card's just absurd. So, four cards here I would love to play Parallax Wave, Caracas, Flage, and Windswift Heath, even Cathar Commando. So, I am going to wield something out of this pack, even the Jedmir's Garden, but I'm going to take um, Parallax Wave here and hope for the best. Yeah, I might wield that Flage, actually. Uh, here I have to take a land. I don't have to, but I think it's correct to take a land over Fable. Because my deck wants just good colors up the curve, and both colors early, double of both colors later. I'm going to take Prismatic Vista here and feel very bad about passing that fable. Ugh. Yeah. That did not feel great. That did not feel great. Hmm. But I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, yeah, I just love playing Vintage Cube too much. And these 64s, it's like, I think it's the top 8 thing that kind of gets me going about this. I'm incredibly excited to play these. Um, I try and fire off as many as I can, and it's not always my schedule allows for it. But but when it does, I'll uh, I'll be in the trenches trying to to draft a sweet deck. That's for sure. Trying to reach the final table, the promised land. So let's see. I have four over there, so I still need like seven playables. But I I can easily play pyrokinesis. I can play interpreter. I don't think I want to play legion extruder. Let's see, Charmaw. Uh, Enter the battlefield, destroy target non basic land. So, that basically, if my opponent has two non basics, this is a 3 3 flyer that kills land. Pretty darn nice. I feel like fixing is pretty heavily drafted these days. It's like everybody knows that they're supposed to be, you know, prioritized highly. What? This is my third pick, and I have to pick between Ruby and Mana Crypt. That is absurd. 
which should I take? I feel like I should take Mox Ruby. Is that is that insane? Mox Ruby helps with uh everything. I don't have that much the crypt is good with, and I already have Sol Ring. That's absurd. Somebody's gonna get fourth pick mana crypt. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Mox Ruby, wow. Uh, okay, so here are a bunch of unplayables and a land I've been wanting. Okay, I mean, I'll I'll take it, but I'm kind of I'm gonna get a bit stressed on playables here. I would love the arena, but I'm gonna take. Oh no, I missed the Pyrogoyf. Okay, let's take Pyrogoyf. That 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 card is good. I have I have read this card. This is basically like Flames and Cobweb and then some. Um, yeah, so let's quickly do the playable count. I'm at 18 play, no, 19 playables. I need to have four more. Can I take this land? I'll take this land and hope for the best. Okay. Uh, Pyrosurfer is fine. I could also take Bobble, but I think I prefer the creature more. Yeah, let's take the creature. So now let's see. I'm at 20 playables, so I still need three more. I can play the Legion Extruder, if nothing. Um, I now have a bit more artifacts to sacrifice. Hmm. I mean, having Sol Ring Ruby definitely... Definitely helps the win percentage, I would guess. Okay, here's a Plunderer. I actually like that card. So, Generous Plunderer, 1 red, 1 colorless, 2-2 two, two menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a treasure token. When you do, target opponent creates a tap treasure token. And then when you attack, it deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts they have. So basically, you can help them make artifacts. And this is like an evasive. It's just good at pushing through damage. So when you look at this draft, it turned out that white wasn't open. But we were, quote unquote, lucky to get some solid white cards. Like, I think I got past Palace Jailer. I got past um, Adeline. I got past Glimmer Lens very late. Uh, same with Mana Tithe. But White wasn't open. Like, I opened Parallax Wave, and then I, I got sent a few good ones, and then I have some very medium ones. So it looked like Red was the place to be for me this draft, but I, I couldn't tell you... Ooh, I wield Flage. That's awesome. I couldn't tell you if I could have built a, a completely mono-red deck. I think I did my best, but, I mean, that's easy to say, right? Let me know if... Uh, if that's if that's if that's not true, so now I got there on you know if I play seventeen mana sources I got there on playables, but I do have some sketchy ones in here like um like the Charmaw like the Extruder, but I think it's okay. Now I even have like this card that makes treasures, so I think it's okay. These cards I can't play. Could play Luris. Let's have it in the. I guess Luris is maybe better than Extruder. I'm actually not sure. Okay, here's a channeler. I actually like that card. Um, so maybe like that. Yeah, this looks fine. These cards are not relevant for me. I'll take this one. I mean, at least it looks like this deck is uh competitive and uh can do some can do some damage. Pyrogoyf. This card is cool. So, 4 mana, Tarmogoyf ability. Ooh, I even wield the Collapse. Okay, sick. Uh, Tarmogoyf ability, and when it or another Lurgoyf enters the battlefield under your control, that creature deals damage equal to its power to any target. So, if this, if I have like three types, this is shoot for three. You can even shoot like a Planeswalker or the opponent. So, it's just better than Flame Tongue. And I like Flame Tongue to begin with. So, there's that. Maybe I put Charmor in the sideboard now. Uh, that I picked up the Mind Collapse. I think that's reasonable. And there we have it. So I'm going to add some basic lands to this deck. And uh, after that, it's going to be time for some matches. As you can see here, I have seven uh, mana sources already and 30 cards total. So that means 10 more lands. There's a little bit of waiting time here. So I'm just going to um, basically count it out here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five white. So I've had five more. I have, I have 10. One plus the six, that's 11 red, so I can go 11, 10. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Okay, 
that's going to do it for the draft portion. I drafted a medium Boros deck with double power in it, so uh, we have game here. Don't go anywhere. All right, let's play some Magic the Gathering. I'm playing my Danish colors in a Vintage Cube 64 player. So yeah, super excited to get going. Let's see what we have here. Um, yeah, this just shows the power of mana fixing, right? This makes this hand from unplayable into great. The, the fact that there's red, red mana here, and we can actually curve a uh, decent one and two, maybe hit some stuff from the opponent's deck with Robber, and then slowly but surely get up the curve here. If my opponent deals with any of my cheap creatures, power go if gets better, etc., etc. So obviously not a crazy hand, just a decent hand, right? Dragon Rage Channeler. Pretty nice winning the die roll here. Playing, of course, playing an aggro deck in general, but also just, you know, getting robber going. You can hit you can hit all sorts of stuff from the top of the the opponent's deck. The latest one I saw was uh when I played the Magic Online Champion Showcase, uh Sam Rolf hit a he hit Ancestor Recall off the top of the opponent's deck. Wow, okay. Mox Ruby. So I guess I should play around Spell Pierce by going land first. Land. So it's pretty insane that Mox triggers Chandler here. So I get Selection. I don't want Eagle, so I can put a creature in my graveyard. So let's see. Yeah, I think playing like this is good. When it can only have Stern Scolding to stop this robber. Let's see if we can hit a one drop off the opponent's deck. That would be pretty pretty awesome. So maybe the opponent has a Surveil land. No Surveil land. So they basically just fetch out the Grixis land because if I hit the Grixis land off the top here, it could hurt my opponent's mana development. So just good, you know, good sequencing by the opponent or good, you know, awareness basically. Swamp, unfortunately, a pretty terrible hit. Um, so now I can play a 2-3 Pyrogoyf, which is unexciting. Ooh, Black Lotus. Ugh, okay, yeah, we just might lose to broken stuff here. Let's see. You're kind of at the mercy. Ooh, Dark Ritual even. Okay. Ah, okay, my opponent has 7 mana turn 2, so I don't really like my chances. Now I'm just hoping my opponent does something that I can deal with um, using Parallax Wave. I don't know what that would be. Uh-huh, Voidwalker, we, we take that. And then what about the rest? Sneak Attack. Yeah. Do you have a big boy, even? Mm-hmm. Woodfall Primus. So my opponent kills two lands. Attack for six. Get back a 5-5. Five five. So funnily enough, this is the sneak attack I passed. And that sneak attack went all the way across the table. That's actually... Okay. So the sneak attack I considered first picking went fifth pick or fourth pick. Fifth pick, I think. That's actually quite amazing. Hmm. Okay. So right now I can't do anything. And I think I need, no, I can't even draw mocks. I think I'm just dead here unless I find something for the Primus. Yeah, turn turn through Woodfall sneak attack Woodfall Primus. That wasn't uh, on the list of stuff I could I could uh, I could beat. Unfortunately, mm hmm. Oh, this looks this looks very very bad for me. This could be a very short video. Dash Ragavan. Okay, so now I'm going to take... Yeah, this is not good. Block, take eight. And I have to draw... I don't know. This just seems like it's over. Now I can double block. 
But the problem is that per uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, opponent. That <laughs> definitely had me beat. I'll just submit the same thing here. With that being said, my opponent playing black, maybe I should add uh, Soul Cauldron here. It's probably better than Pyrokinesis. <clears throat> what a beating. That's how it is. When you play Vintage Cube, sometimes you just get destroyed. Sometimes you destroy the opponent. Sometimes you have the best games of Magic. Ten turns back and forth. You never know what you're going to get. Yeah, this deck is definitely not set up to, you know, beat incredible brokenness. Mm, okay, we can we can keep this. It's definitely not anything crazy. So I can go turn one land, turn two, uh, find my surveil land, play that surveil land. Not ideal. Not ideal. It's unsure if I'm unsure if I'm supposed to like mulligan into something that's more aggressive. But I think with a card like Lelian 3, then you just take your chance. Okay, Hardcast Grief. In interesting. I will cycle for Elegant Parlor. My opponent will take Flame Slash. And then that Grief is on the board. I don't think that's the end of the world. We can definitely play against that card. It's not the worst thing it can come out of cut out come out of a black lotus. That's for sure. It's even possible my opponent go go ahead goes ahead and takes uh something like Lelia. Whatever they pick here will say a lot about their hand. Let's say they leave me with the flame slash, then maybe they have a reanimation spell or whatever. I'm not sure I can I can care too much about that. At least it seems like a hard decision. That's basically all I can ask in this spot. I end up taking the Lelia. Okay. So I draw it. Unfortunately, I have a terrible draw step. Let's see if I can have a good draw step next turn. Do I want to draw one one? I think I have to do I have to do better. So I can go turn four Pyragoyf, which is not great either. Hmm. Not great. Let's see what the opponent does here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. My opponent knows about Pyrogoyf and Sunbake Canyon. No place. We're kind of even on resources. The only problem is I know my hand is garbage. So I can Pyrogoyf shoot my opponent for three. I don't I don't think that's even good. I hope I draw a better play. <sighs> Blazing Rootwalla. Maybe I should play that card out. Maybe I should crack Canyon. I'll actually this is horrible, but I think it's better. I could draw better, like two draw or whatever. Okay, so we play two creatures out. I have Pyrogoyf for next turn as a 4-5. That 4-5 is protected by the Benevolent Bodyguard. So there's something where I have a chance against, let's say, creature removal. Let's say my opponent's hand is a couple of removal spells. So let's see if my opponent cycled for Sanders Lounge for fixing or for cycling. Okay. Here comes some reanimation, I guess. Oh, arc trail. So let's see. So basically, I go sacrifice, throw red.
the surfer. Hmm. No, I think I'm supposed to get the pyrogoyf down now. Pyrogoyf, shoot my opponent for four. Attack for one. Next turn, go Pyro Surfer, land, attack for a bunch. Is this dismember? Okay, it's Fatal Push. Fair enough. So now my Pyroglyph is a 5 6, which trades with the troll for what it's worth. If my opponent manages to reanimate it, pedal. Let's see if we get sneaked out of the tournament here. My opponent's deck is very capable. So now I lose my four lands and I just have this Pyrogoyf. I guess we'll try it out. Take 10. My opponent's yard got reshuffled, so that even shrunk the pyrogoyf. That's that's kind of cool. Let's see if my opponent can uh, shut it down here. All it takes is a random creature, random big creature. It's kind of ironic. My my first pick this draft was lightning bolt versus sneak attack. I felt like, and I lose to it first round. That's brutal. So what do we have here? My opponent can reanimate my Lelia. And unfortunately, my opponent's racing me right now. Opponent hits the swamp. They can play out the swamp. That's fine. I need to draw land now to be in the game. That is indeed a land. I feel like I should attack with both here, put my opponent to eight. I have some have some decent outs here, like lightning bolt is lethal. Is fetch land lethal? No, I don't think so. Let's see what the opponent's hitting here. Woodfall Primus, so thankfully that goes into the exile and not into the hand. If it was into the hand, my opponent could sneak it from exile. No such luck. When it has to pass to play out the land, even though it's not ex exciting at all. Paragoyf, attack my opponent down to five. I'll leave a chump blocker, and that could be all she wrote. That was not uh, that was not a lot of value for your money. That's how it goes sometimes. I thought it had a sweet deck. Not much to do here. I just got got owned. Black Lotus was very strong. My my deck is kind of weak against you know fast, overwhelming stuff. And where if you play like black for discard spells, blue for counter spells, you can kind of punish that kind of deck. But uh, yeah, not this time around. We got we got severely punished for playing you know a fair strategy, and we didn't have like great draws. My opponent maybe didn't have great draws. I, well, game one was absurd, but but this game was kind of. I mean, I had I had a chance to win this game. Um, but yeah, my deck was just it was just you know badly uh, lined up against what the opponent was doing, and uh, yeah, that's what happens. Me next time, I might I might uh, gamble on the sneak attack. It's way more fun to be on that side of the table, but uh, it is what it is. I uh, will play a lot more Magic and uh, look out for more videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.